Today we take a look at how an emotionally abused teenager in Bangalore, India sought the help of a mental health professional to overcome his scars and succeed in defeating his insecurities. The following docudrama is based on a true story. Sections of the interactions between the client and the counselor have been dramatized to emphasize the need for mental health counseling. The name of the protagonist has been changed to protect the privacy of the client. The role of the client has been played by an actor, Adhiraj Singh. Thus, this docudrama is only representative in nature, made with the intention of creating awareness on the need for mental health care. Adi, what happened? Why are you crying? Ma'am, this morning I saw Aditya crying. When I went to inquire what was upsetting him, he just rejected me. It bothered me a lot. When I look back at the last few weeks, he has been so withdrawn, fidgeting, and has not eaten much. Is this ominous of something dark coming? Ma'am, uh, I was not allowed to play any games because the FBI called me a spoiled sport. I was not allowed to do any art because, ma'am, they all judged me and called me clumsy, said that, you know, I don't have the creative impulse to do all these things. I was not supposed to sing because, I don't know, I guess I'm not talented enough. And I was not supposed to train for any physical fitness because I always have been unfit. That's the way I've seen myself. And I naturally started feeling downcasted, ma'am. And, you know, I felt like I was a burden for my parents, for my friends, for my family, to this earth itself, ma'am. I felt like, you know, I was a big burden. Who told you all these things, Aditya? Or, or did you imagine this is what they meant? Ma'am, since I was a kid, I remember even when I was six and seven, my neighbors, my classmates, my cousins, my relatives, ma'am, they called me ugly, they called me unfit, they called me clumsy. I cried a lot, ma'am. And when I went home for, you know, any kind of release, my mother never supported me, ma'am. She never said anything to any of these people. She never defended me or stood by me or told me that, you know, I was not these things and things will be okay. And ma'am, somewhere along the line, that's what killed me. Because, you know, once my mother was never there for me, I actually thought that, you know, all these things and all these judgments that the people have put on me, I actually am all these things and I start to believe in them. And ma'am, slowly, slowly I realized that I did not have anybody to trust or talk to. So, taking a blade and cutting myself was the easiest thing for me to do, where I did feel a lot of relief. And ma'am, slowly I realized that, you know, I didn't have a place in this world anymore. And by cutting myself and confirming to what these people have called me all my life, I thought that, you know, I will finally get something, but I didn't still. I felt like I don't have the right to live. Aditya, you sound angry. Do you feel anger? Ma'am, I have no anger. I feel, I feel paralyzed. I feel entrapped. Mm -hmm. I feel like I don't have the right to be angry anymore because, uh, I'm less of a human. That's what I've been told all my life. And uh, neither do I have any emotions to harbor against the people who did this to me. Because even for them, I was less than a commodity all my life. And my right to live has always been under the validation of the society, ma'am. Because I have always done what they've expected me to do. And even when I did, I was still given those labels and names. So I... I don't know what emotion I have inside me. I don't know if I'm angry or... I really don't know, ma'am. Hi, 
how is this cutting behavior helping you you look like a charming young man you must be having dreams of your own what are your dreams tell me about them ma'am do you know you're the first person who's ever asked me that about my dreams because i always thought that you know i didn't have the ability to see a future for myself or dream because all that i've been told all my life but now that you do ask i've always been interested to be a cruise boat pilot ma'am because you know i want to travel the world earn in foreign exchange wear good clothes eat exotic food meet beautiful women party hard but then again there's no point ma'am because you know to achieve my dreams and goals is just something that's never been within me hello mrs sindhu i'm very happy to share with you that i've had a few conversations with aditya recently i figure we need to give him opportunities to explore his strengths and weaknesses once that is done it will give him an opportunity to discover where his flair lies and once that is done you, we get, he gets certain opportunities it will help us to identify his weaknesses and equally at the same time help in building skills and identify what his strong points are and to give him opportunities in that area Ma'am, as suggested by you, we have exposed Aditya to the world of opportunities in the travel industry. To eliminate options in favor of the cruise boat industry, he has undertaken several exercises and tests. We found his strengths to be concentration, curiosity, a sense of adventure, and a sharp intellect. However, group dynamism is not his strength. I think if we fine tune these traits into skills we should be headed towards his goals. Summing up, counselor Mamta Rajesh tells Digital Discourse, I'm glad Aditya wanted to see a counselor. I think he was at a good place to start. There was a readiness within him and he was ready to work on building his self-confidence. So one of the first tasks that we set about doing was to build his self confidence we asked him to do small tasks which would help him to believe in himself that was crucial secondly i wasn't myself much aware about what his choices for vocation was then on we encouraged him to do his homework about what all it entailed to be a cruise boat pilot we urged him to start identifying what he would need to do to train for that some way to give him a sense of responsibility of taking charge of his own career so also his parents encouraged him to see if he was best suited for the job they asked him to identify what he needed to improve his skills or training and all of that helped him to find almost a purpose a goal something to work towards something to look forward to which in a way is exactly what he needed at that point of time aditya's father reinforced this understanding that what others think of him or say to him is theirs and their opinion and their feelings and that aditya need not own it or accept it that validation from his father also was very powerful for aditya and all of these helped him to move forward through the counseling process and the support that he got from his family i think gave him the impetus to put forward his own career goals on fast track and alongside as his confidence grew it was beautiful to see him blossoming and finally beginning to believe in himself aditya himself eventually regained his confidence and he was he he pleasantly surprised me with a wonderful statement that he made in therapy in one of the later sessions in fact i've written it down in the case sheet because i found it so very powerful
when you smile back at the mean person it not only gives you confidence but a moral edge over that person that person will never again indulge in such nefarious behavior and you will win over with infinite grace this was such a textbook makeover for someone who was struggling with poor confidence to have reached this place it was a beautiful journey of empowerment his positive outlook not only transformed him but it left him feeling very rewarded with definitely improved self worth and self esteem as counselors and mental health professionals it's imperative that we give publicity to such success stories with due consent of course it's also important to recognize that in today's stress filled world where there is so much need for emotional nurturing acceptance love and self acceptance it's important for us to spread the word of what counseling can offer or what mental health professionals can offer that said and done counseling and counselors have limitations we cannot offer suggestions advice or even solutions to people all we can offer is to hold a mirror to the client's mind to help them reflect to help them understand themselves and to help them find their own best options or to find a solution that works best for them i cannot even force a client to come in for therapy regularly or at the pace that is recommended all i can offer is to be there for the client when my client comes in to be there to offer a soundboard to help them reflect basically we are not god we can help a fellow human being in distress to help them feel understood and accepted and that i think is a big need in today's world aditya's father also was instrumental in doing a lot of research to help aditya select the right maritime academy for his training that was also valuable support that he got from his family speaking exclusively to digital discourse dr dan reidenberg managing director national council for suicide prevention united states of america spoke exclusively to digital discourse saying Some harm may be a precursor to suicidal behavior. It falls along the continuum. You see, when people are doing well in life, when they're happy and well-functioning, they're not hurting themselves. They're not self-harming. They're not using that as a coping mechanism. So while there are some people, and in fact, in countries in Europe, there is a diagnosis of non-suicidal self-harm, which are people who... have no suicidal intent but do hurt themselves what well, what happens is when they harm themselves and things don't improve they continue to escalate that rip and the self harm becomes addictive and potentially lethal so we know it falls on that continuum because again people that are doing well don't self harm to cope with their distress